Have you ever thought about creating your own online course? Well, you're not alone. Over the past few years, online courses have exploded in popularity. They're a fantastic way to share your knowledge with the world, create a passive income stream, and have the flexibility to work from anywhere, anytime. The demand for online learning is soaring, and there's never been a better time to dive in and start creating your own course. But where to begin, you might ask? That's where we come in. This video is designed to guide beginners through the process of creating an online course. We'll break it down into manageable steps, making it simple and straightforward. Whether you're a seasoned professional or a novice in your field, this guide will provide you with the tools and techniques you need to create a successful online course. In this video, we will walk through a six-step guide to creating an online course for beginners. So, stay tuned. The first step in creating your online course is identifying your course topic. Picking the right topic is crucial. It's the foundation of your course, and it's what will draw learners in. The best course topic is one that you are both passionate about and knowledgeable in. Why? Because passion fuels engagement, and knowledge ensures you can provide real value to your students. But how do you narrow down potential topics? Start by listing your areas of expertise, your interests, or areas where you have unique insights or experiences. Don't rush this part. Take your time, brainstorm, and let your ideas flow. Once you have a list, it's time to assess each potential topic's marketability. This is where you'll need to do a little homework. Look into existing courses in your field. Are they successful? Is there a demand for them? Do they leave gaps that your course could fill? Remember, your course doesn't have to be groundbreaking. Sometimes, a fresh perspective or a new teaching approach can make all the difference. There are also online tools and resources that can help you gauge the popularity and demand for your potential topics. Use them to your advantage. And finally, don't be afraid to ask for feedback. Reach out to your network, potential students, or even use social media polls to get an idea of what people are interested in learning. Once you have your topic, you're ready to move on to the next step. The second step is setting learning outcomes for your course. What exactly are learning outcomes, you might ask? Well, they are the heart and soul of your course. They're the measurable knowledge, skills, and attitudes that your students will gain by the end of your course. It's like a roadmap, guiding your students towards their destination, which is a better understanding of your course topic. Now, why are learning outcomes so important? Well, without them, your students are like sailors without a compass. They might get lost in the vast sea of information, unsure of where they're going or why they're even sailing. Learning outcomes provide direction and purpose. They help your students focus on what's important and motivate them to reach the finish line. So, how do you create learning outcomes? It's simpler than you might think. Start by identifying what you want your students to know or be able to do by the end of your course. Then, write it down in clear, specific, and measurable terms. It's like telling your students, here's what you'll be able to do once you've completed this course. Remember, these outcomes should align with your course topic and be realistic and achievable. For example, if your course is about baking, one of your learning outcomes might be, by the end of this course, you will be able to bake a perfect chocolate souffle. With your learning outcomes in place, you can start building your course content. The third step is creating the content for your course. This is where your expertise and creativity truly come into play. It's all about presenting your knowledge in a digestible and engaging way. There are numerous types of content you can include in your course. Videos, for instance, are a popular choice. They offer a dynamic way of delivering information and can be particularly useful for visual learners. If you're comfortable in front of a camera, or even with creating animations or slideshows, videos can be a great tool in your course creation arsenal. Quizzes are another excellent type of content. These can help students assess their understanding of the material, provide instant feedback, and make learning interactive. It's a way to keep your students engaged and motivated throughout the course. Readings, whether they're articles, ebooks, or infographics, can also be incorporated into your course. They offer a more in-depth look into specific topics and can be a great complement to videos and quizzes. 
But creating the content is just half the battle. The next step is organizing it. Think about how to structure your content into modules or lessons. Each module should focus on a specific topic or skill, and the lessons within it should follow a logical sequence. This will help your students navigate the course and make the learning process smoother. However, remember that no matter the type of content you choose, quality should always be your top priority. High quality content is engaging, informative, and valuable. It's what will make your course stand out and keep your students coming back for more. And don't forget to keep your content engaging. Use storytelling, real-life examples, and interactive elements to keep your students interested. Remember, an engaged student is more likely to finish the course and recommend it to others. With your content ready, it's time to think about how you will deliver your course. The fourth step is choosing a platform to host your course. Now you might be wondering, what exactly is an online course platform? Well, it's the digital stage where your course is going to shine. It's the place where your course will live, breathe, and interact with your learners. Think of it as the classroom of the digital world. Choosing the right platform is crucial because it's not just about storing and delivering your content. It's about creating an environment where your students can learn effectively and seamlessly. It's about providing a space where your teachings can thrive and resonate. So, how do you choose the right platform? Well, there are several factors to consider. Firstly, ease of use. You want a platform that's intuitive and user-friendly, both for you and your students. You don't want to spend countless hours wrestling with the technicalities of uploading content or setting up quizzes. Similarly, your students don't want to waste their time figuring out how to navigate the platform. They're here to learn, not to solve a puzzle. Secondly, consider the features. What tools does the platform offer to enhance learning? Can you integrate multimedia content? Is there a system for quizzes and assessments? Can you track your students' progress? These features can greatly enrich your course and make learning more interactive and engaging. Lastly, pricing. Yes, the budget matters. Some platforms may offer a cornucopia of features, but they might also come with a hefty price tag. You need to balance the cost with the value you're getting. Remember, the most expensive platform isn't necessarily the best. It's about finding the right fit for your course and your students. Once you've considered all these aspects, you can make an informed decision. And remember, you're not locked into your choice. If a platform doesn't work out, you can always switch. The important thing is to start somewhere. Once you've chosen your platform, you can start putting your course together. The fifth step is deciding how much to charge for your course. Now this can be a tricky decision, but don't worry, we've got some strategies to guide you through it. Firstly, consider the value your course offers. Are you teaching a highly specialized skill or knowledge? The more unique, valuable, and in-demand your course is, the higher the price you can charge. Secondly, think about your target audience's budget. If you're catering to students, for example, they might not have the financial capacity to afford a high-priced course. There are several pricing strategies that you can explore. You could opt for a one-time fee, a subscription model, or even a tiered pricing system that offers different levels of access to your course materials. Remember, your price tag isn't just about covering costs. It's a reflection of the value your course brings to the table. With your price set, there's just one more step to go. The final step is marketing your course. It's all about getting the word out, attracting students, and building momentum. Let's delve into a few basic marketing strategies that can help your course reach its potential audience. First up is social media marketing. Platforms like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn are ripe with opportunities to promote your course. Share snippets of your content, post testimonials, and engage with your followers to create a buzz. Next is email marketing. Start by building an email list. Regular newsletters and promotional emails can keep potential students informed about your course offerings and any special deals. Lastly, don't overlook the power of search engine optimization, or SEO. By optimizing your course description and content for search engines, you can attract organic traffic to your course. Remember, creating a marketing plan is crucial before launching your course. It gives you a clear roadmap to follow. And there you have it 
a six-step guide to creating an online course for beginners. Now, it's your turn to get started.